for the people who always ask about our little Bailey. She's not so little anymore. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another week here with us at the Handy Creators. Thank you so much for joining us on another project. A lot of people ask about our front entry planters that we've had. And it was actually one of the first projects that we ever did on this house. We're going on three years now with the house and we always get asked like, how did you do it? How do you maintain it? Was it easy? Was it affordable? So in today's video, we will basically be recreating what we did in the front of our house to another area of our home and showing you how just with some concrete blocks and a little bit of construction adhesive, you can completely make over a new area and have a beautiful spot to plant herbs, flowers, or even veggies. This should be a very simple project that almost any beginner DIYer will be able to do in their home. It doesn't take up much space and could be fully customizable to whatever area you want or wherever you want to place it. If you guys ever have like video recommendations or things that you want to see, like feel free to let us know because if it isn't our means and we could do it for you guys all over again, not like huge projects because I'm not going to do the seating area all over again. But <laughs> if it isn't our means, we're more than happy to recreate <clears throat> certain projects to show you guys how easy or how difficult they were to do. I think with that, let's show you what we purchased and how we did it. Let's go. We started off this project by going to our local hardware store and picking out all the materials that we were going to be needing for this build. For this project, the only things you are going to need are the four by eight caps, some soil, a level, a square, a mallet, a shovel and some construction adhesive. These are mostly simple basic tools that most likely anyone has in their shop and then the only thing that we really had to purchase was the soil and the caps. So let's start out by digging off the dirt. Using a shovel we began marking the area where the planter would go and began removing the grass and dirt. The advantage of the spot where the planter is going is that due to the pergola and outdoor kitchen not a lot of grass grows here making this step a little less time consuming. Since the blocks are going directly on the soil, we raked the entire area to ensure we had a nice leveled surface to work on. This step will facilitate the rest of the project and make it a lot easier to install. So let's start off with the first one and this is the one that's going to guide the rest of them for us. We want to connect it to the existing kitchen that we already have so we're going to start it right here. First thing I would do is take off any of the ex excess dirt around and create a bit of a groove here, a dent for it to fall into. And we're going to place this bad boy. Ooh, she's heavy. We want to check for two different things. We want to check that she's perfectly straight. So mine's isn't. Okay, beautiful. And we also want to make sure that she, it's not falling down that it's straight like this too so ours is falling a bit down so i'm just gonna raise it put a little soil something that you're gonna want to make sure of is these blocks aren't always straight on top themselves so like for example this one has a few lumps so i'm gonna make sure i put the level somewhere that is not on the bumps because then it's not gonna give us an accurate reading okay i put way too much we're gonna wiggle and then let's see if this helps perfect now we're going to check it like this to make sure I'm going to shove a little bit in here. Okay, so we have her centered. You want to make sure to take your time with this. Honestly, this is the most important part of the whole project. It's just making sure that each of them are aligned and straight. Now the block is perfectly in place. What are we going to do to make sure it's secured? I'm going to get a bit of this excess soil that we have and make like a little barrier around it to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere because I am going to be moving the one next to it and we don't want this one to move whatsoever. We're good to go. Now let's show you what we're going to do with the next block. Now that that one has been installed, it's time for the second block. The whole theory behind this is that this one's going to turn and make a perfect 90 degree angle. We're going to put some construction adhesive where this block is going to connect to the next one just to ensure that they're not going to move and that this will act as one single unit. A lot of people use mortar and we have done so in the past, but since we're trying to make a more simple video and more simple steps this is definitely a, an option that you can do you just want to make sure to add the construction adhesive where this block is going to connect to this one and then you can just go ahead and place it and make them line up right now we are checking for a few things one that both blocks squeeze and 
have the construction adhesive really sticking into each other. You wanna make sure to clean off any excess at this point so that you don't have to later on. Once that's set, you wanna make sure that they're, they're first square. So you're gonna grab your square, check it on the inside, and then adjust it if necessary. And you're also gonna check for leveling. What do we want? We want that this one is leveled with the next one. So here we can see that it's a little bit too low. So we're just gonna shove the dirt down there. And that's what we love about using dirt to level these out is because you can really play with it. If we had concrete right now, we would have to take off the block, add more concrete, then put it back on. And it's more of a lengthy process. This one's a lot more beginner friendly. All right, and once you have that, you're gonna take your level this way. Here we have it straight. And then once again, just squeeze it onto the previous one. And then you can continue repeating step one on the rest of the blocks. The best thing about a concrete block planter is that they are extremely durable and withstand any weather making it the perfect addition to your home. We did something similar like this in the front of our house when we first moved in and let us just say that they still look as beautiful as when we first installed them. If you're considering doing something like this in your home and want something a bit more permanent, simply use mortar to connect each block with each other and add a bit of the mortar mix below each block instead of using soil. This will allow for your raised planter to last you a lifetime. You also want to make sure that the line is actually going straight here um, and it's not opening along the way. So right here we have a good straight line. Something else you can do to check that is you grab your level and kind of just place it and you're going to tell if it's straight or not. If you have a longer long level, the better. We decided to alter our planter just a bit here because we have this beautiful rubber tree who has been with us for quite some time and is thriving in this specific spot. So, we decided to incorporate it into the new space. Also, have you ever tried to move a massive pot like this? Yeah, that's not happening. Once all the blocks were placed, we began adding the dirt previously removed back into the planter to fill it in a bit before adding the new soil. Although fully optional, we decided to add a weed control barrier that we had extra from when we did our garden to, to try to prevent weeds from growing. So we finished the blocks. We have put most of the soil that was out back in. We have added the weed control. Um, we added a few rocks on top to just allow for it not to move too much now when we throw the soil. So this is our ultimate blend. <laughs> we use this in our garden every time we plant something. This is the combination that we use. So we buy topsoil, the cheapest one you can find out there, and cow manure. You don't need anything. You don't need to spend $15 on a bag of soil. Believe me guys, like this is amazing. So topsoil is not going to have any nutrients, anything, but the cow manure is going to replace that. So we're going to combine these two, get it to level, and then plant some beautiful flowers, and we should be all done with this part of the project. For this blend, we use a ratio of 1 to 1 and mix it in as best as possible using our hands. Although this may get mixed reviews from the gardening community, this blend is what has worked best for us and has taken us through two whole harvesting years. If you want to see our most recent garden harvest, make sure to click the video above. We absolutely love how the finished project came out as it completely revitalized the space. We do have plans of painting these once the weather clears up. Let us know in the comment section below if this is something that you would consider doing to your area and if you liked how this turned out. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!